things like the Omega candle and 1 million Bitcoin are still to come. All we do know is that there is far more demand than supply and the supply is going to get cut in half. So it's anyone's guess what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But the, the rapid movement of Bitcoin is lost for some people. They, they may have forgotten what it felt like in past massive bull runs where it just went up massively in a few days time or a few weeks time. But if you think about where we're headed, we're headed into the 0.1M range, right? 100K range. Once you're there, if Bitcoin doubles or triples, that's like 300K or 0.3M. And if it doubles again, you're getting really close to a million. So we're already pushing up into this very high range area where millions is not crazy. It's actually very attainable. I bumped into Lawrence Lifford at the conference and uh, he was saying, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about your 1 million prediction and uh, I'm starting to see it now. It's looking very possible because it is very possible. It's just mm -hmm. cognitively, it's difficult for us to process what it means for Bitcoin to be a million dollars a coin because mm -hmm. that's very far away from where we are now. But if you look at it in terms of multiples, it's not. It's a 10x from 100K. Or at 300K, it's just a 3x and change. And Bitcoin does these doubles and triples quite often. Renowned investor and Bitcoiner Samson Mao is still confident we're going to see an Omega candle for Bitcoin. An Omega candle is a green candle in which we see Bitcoin move upwards $100,000 or more in one single day. He believes we'll see it happen as Bitcoin is on its inevitable path to $1 million per coin, a figure most investors have a hard time coming to terms with. For those who don't know Samson Mao, he is the CEO of Jan3, a Bitcoin-focused company aiming to accelerate hyper-Bitcoinization. He works closely with nation-states, central banks, and countries to develop Bitcoin strategies. In his latest interview, Samson broke down why he thinks an Omega candle is coming for Bitcoin and why he believes we'll see Bitcoin hit $1 million per coin by the end of 2024. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video where Samson breaks down his work with nation states and central banks and how they are coming for Bitcoin. Also guys, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Now let's jump in with Samson Mao. Well, there's a number of factors at play here. Like we're at 900 coins produced a day. It's going to drop to 450. There's about 1.2, 1 1.3 million coins sloshing around on the exchanges. And you have about, I don't know, 6,000 coins demand per day now, per trading day. If you, figure, if you look at all the pieces of the puzzle that are laid in front of us, it just shows that there's not a lot of Bitcoin to buy. Nobody's selling. Mm -hmm. Most of us are at the point at which we've reached the conclusion, like, sell for what? If I need a house, maybe I would sell something, but I don't. And a lot of us are very low time preference, so we're not looking for a Lambo or something. We're here for change. And for us, Bitcoin is the end game. It's not about investing in Bitcoin to cash out. So how many sellers are there? I don't really know. Yeah. Some people will sell. They'll probably sell at 100K, but they're going to buy back when it keeps going up to 200K. Maybe some people will sell at uh, half a million and they buy back in at 750 because it's still going up. And at the same time, this is all playing out with ETFs. We're working to get nation states onboarded to buy Bitcoin. Nation states are already mining Bitcoin. So 1 million is just a easy target in my view. Nation states may actually just buy the ETF, right? Central banks can already buy stock. If you look at the, the Bank of Switzerland, they made a lot of investments. They were actually hoping to weaken their currency. So they spent a lot of money and bought a bunch of stocks and then the stocks went up. <laughs> and they, they only strengthened their currency. So we know that they can buy anything accessible in traditional markets. And if you have an ETF, that's just another thing they can buy. Um, buying actual Bitcoin, holding actual Bitcoin, I think is a more difficult thing. So what we might actually see is nation state adoption of Bitcoin through ETF buying because it's so easy for them to do. It's already structured and lined up. They just have to push a button. So we'll see. But 
we know for a fact that countries do want hard assets. That's why they've been buying gold for the past mm -hmm. tw few decades and accumulating. Except for Canada, we sold all the gold. But <laughs> countries with some foresight and with some planning are trying to accumulate hard assets. And with the uh, the effect of uh, U.S. seizure of Russian funds in the central bank, it kind of sends a signal that the dollar is not a functional reserve currency anymore because they're just IOUs that anyone can freeze and remove from your possession at any given time. So you're going to see more hard assets being sought out, which will be gold because they know gold. Gold is old. And they're going to go into Bitcoin as Bitcoin becomes more expensive. Because as it becomes more expensive, it becomes more valuable in their eyes. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Necessity is the mother of Bitcoin adoption. So you can crush your population and try to lock them up for having Bitcoin and transacting in Bitcoin and all that. But if your trading partners want Bitcoin, what are you going to do at the end of the day? We're all interconnected. We need raw materials. Oh. You know, people buy lumber from Canada and uh, you buy gas and other things from other places and you buy your goods from, uh, from Asia and, and from China. You buy your electronics there. You buy your chips from Taiwan. If anybody, if, if that adoption curve is steep enough and let's say Taiwan... Uh, and Canada, we all want Bitcoin for trade. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to capitulate because you need to buy the thing. They don't want dollars anymore. They don't want Canadian dollars or they don't want uh, a CBDC. So you're going to have to open up to Bitcoin eventually. So it's the necessity that's going to make it happen. And I see us getting there simply because the dollar is dying. It looks like it's, it's always looking like it's on its last legs for various reasons. And <laughs> perpetually. It's just, perpetually. Every morning I wake up, I'm surprised that it's still hanging on there. But all analysis points to a failure of the US dollar very, very soon. Well, an Omega candle is 100K. So yep. you can have a 10 Omega event, which is a million dollar candle a day. And that could be enough to mark the end of fiat, right? A 10 Omega day would be the day that uh, fiat all becomes worthless everywhere at the same time. And it's difficult for us to grasp the concept of fiat money failing very quickly because we've grown up in it. You know, we're, we're mostly born, most of us, I think, in Bitcoin are born post gold standard, right? So we've never really known a world where there's not been fiat, but... Fiat is a recent thing, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. It's only a few decades old. It's an experiment. Bitcoin is actually old technology, if you think about it. Bitcoin is the closer thing to the original form of money, which is peer-to-peer, -peer bearer asset. Maybe a gold coin or trading items with one another. It's, a, it's just going back to that. So the format is new. It's using computer science and cryptography. But the fundamental is it's valuable because two people trade directly in this instrument. So we're just going back to the basics. A fiat money is the experiment that's failing. My inclination is that it's going to happen sooner than later. I'll give you two views. Okay. The pessimistic view is war. So people forget that in times of war, most things stop working. If there is a World War III, you're probably not going to be able to send a bank wire anywhere. That whole system just grinds to a halt. That's it. It's over. And that can trigger hyper Bitcoinization and uh, the death of fiat completely. The optimistic view is that price becomes a signal. And Bitcoin is sitting at you know, 0.25M, 250K. And that starts to demonetize other assets like gold. And people just FOMO in because they want Bitcoin because everything else is not valuable anymore. That would be the better, more peaceful outcome. But I don't put it past the powers that be that they push for war in an attempt to hang on to control. Mm -hmm. Because you've seen during the COVID crisis that 
a crisis needs a solution, and if they can provide a solution, then they're relevant and they can maintain the control mm -hmm. while providing that solution. So what the the solution was lock everyone down mm -hmm. and stop mobility, mm -hmm. and that's pretty bad. So it was very bad. It's a it's an excuse for control, and war is the same thing. We'll need to do certain things like have a war economy and. You know, limit mobility, limit funds, seize funds. There's all this good stuff that comes in terms of control with the war. Mm -hmm. So that would be the worst outcome, that people push for war to maintain control. The better outcome, I think, is natural market forces push Bitcoin up and thereby bring about hyper-Bitcoinization. I would say the biggest second-order effect is we have better governance, better governments just by imbuing them with Bitcoin. Because if you think about it, all of our rights, property rights, individual rights, even human rights, they're very weakly held and weakly granted. Just with the, a swift emergency act, we lost most of our rights in Canada. And it shows how thinly tied together all of this stuff is. It's held together with string and tape and it can be destroyed. The best way to ensure that we actually have property rights is to give people Bitcoin because that can't be taken from you. It's in your head. Uh, if you keep it with a custodian, yes, it can be taken from you. But if you have Bitcoin itself, no one can take that from you unless through violent coercion. But that's a different story, I think. But if you can make the governments understand this, because now they have Bitcoin personally, and then maybe the government mines Bitcoin, I think we'll see a better world in which property rights are more respected. Because the current norm and the current understanding of how things work is not the right way. There's a tendency to take from other people and control people. But... With self-sovereignty, I think we will be yet more sovereignty for everyone because they understand it now. So there's Samson Mao's insights on Bitcoin's future and the potential for an Omega candle, a candle in which we see Bitcoin increase by over six figures in one day. Now guys, if you want to stay up to date with the latest in crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to my daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It covers the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description to join over 60,000 others and becoming a better crypto investor right now. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.